I don't like camera or lens comparisons and in this video I'm gonna tell you why. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. Quite often people, you, my audience that is, ask me to compare two or more different cameras or lenses. And indeed, in the past I have made some comparison videos, but I'm not too crazy about them. And in this video I'm going to share four reasons why I generally do not like to do comparisons. Reason number one, they are extremely boring to do. There seems to be a certain standard for a comparison that people expect. You shoot side by side many pictures in many different conditions and then you pixel peep those results. And that is extremely boring work. It's not really photography, it's more like repro reproduction or something like that. It is very time consuming and you have to be really super careful with your procedures so that you do everything correctly. There are so many settings to check with cameras or lenses to make sure that you are doing everything correctly so that the results are comparable. You have to be super careful because people are buying gear based on your uh, comparison. And it's very easy to forget one tiny little setting somewhere in the menus or wherever and then you're already halfway into your comparison and uh, you realize that oh darn I forgot that and then you have to start all over again. And sometimes you go back to your office, your home and check out the results on a big screen and then you realize that one of the uh, lenses or cameras looks suspiciously bad. And then you have to go out and redo the whole comparison just to make sure that uh, the, the first results are valid. Because you don't want to tell people that uh, this camera lens is bad uh, unless you are absolutely sure that it is as bad as it looks. Because like I said, people buy gear based on your uh, comparison. And if you shoot outside, which you probably should do, because in a complete uh, comparison you have uh, different types of conditions and environments. Well, if you shoot outside, the conditions can change when you are in the middle of your comparison. You're halfway into your comparison, you just finished with one lens or camera, then it starts to rain or becomes overcast and cloudy and uh, then you have to abort the mission and come back again because you'll want to have all your test pictures in the same kind of light and uh, same kind of conditions. If one picture is shot in the sunshine and one is shot in the rain, those two pictures are not really comparable and your audience is not gonna like that. So all in all, it's time consuming and rather boring work and I'd much rather spend my time shooting some real pictures and enjoy my photography while I'm at it. Reason number two, there is always something wrong with your comparison. It doesn't matter how well and how carefully you execute your comparison, there is always someone complaining in the comments down below. Especially if their favorite camera did not perform as well as they expected. And there is one topic that is especially toxic and that is comparing micro four thirds and full frame. And if you happen to conclude that uh, full frame has better image quality than micro four thirds, all those micro four thirds fanboys are going to they are going to tell you how you should have done the comparison and uh, that's why I try to stay away from that uh, topic and that kind of comparison. I also don't think it makes a lot of sense to compare those two. Both have their upsides and downsides, so it doesn't really make that much sense. Reason number three, comparisons are not always real world related. 
no matter how you do uh, a comparison, it may not have uh, much to do with real world photography. Because in real world, you only can use one camera at a time. You can only capture that uh, decisive moment with one camera. Unless you have some uh, special rig with seven cameras, but who really shoots like that? It's not real world photography. And if you are happy with the results, then it's all good. And if you are not happy with the results, you can only guess what would have happened with another camera or another lens. You can only guess if another piece of gear could have saved the shot. You can never be sure, because that uh, decisive moment, that particular moment, will never ever happen again. And even a comparison winner camera or lens won't work if you don't like that lens or camera. We all have our preferences and they are very personal and even if a camera wins a, a comparison or a lens wins a comparison, it still may not work for me or for you. At least I like some cameras and lenses that uh, are not test winners. One example is the Zeiss Loxia 35mm f2. I'll put some pictures here on the screen while I talk. I used to own that lens uh, some time ago and I really liked that lens. It was awesome in my opinion. But when you look at any test or comparison, it doesn't look like a winner. If I like a piece of gear, I really don't care how the test results look if there are some results available for that particular piece of gear. And as a matter of fact, if I need to buy a new camera or a new lens, I don't look at so many tests or comparisons. I try to figure out what I want and what I need and then I just buy it and uh, usually I'm happy with that. And the reason number four. Comparisons are really difficult to organize because you have to have all the necessary gear at the same time. And I can't buy all the gear I review or compare or use in my videos. I simply don't have enough money. I have to borrow most of the gear that I review or compare. And it can be very difficult to borrow uh, cameras and lenses from different sources at exactly the same time. For example, a certain Sony camera can be available this week, but a certain Fuji camera that I want to compare uh, with the Sony is only available next week. And then finally, when I get them both cameras at the same time, then it's raining the whole week and I can't go out and shoot proper test pictures. And again, I'd much rather spend my time enjoying photography and taking some real world pictures. And I feel that I have enough uh, video topics even without any comparisons. But I want to say that I have nothing fundamentally against comparisons and they are probably useful for many. And if someone really enjoys doing comparisons and someone else really enjoys looking at comparisons, then it's all good. Supply meets demand. However, I would much rather do something else than comparisons. But I'm not saying I'm never ever going to make another comparison. I might just do one if uh, the right gear comes along in the right kind of circumstances. And now let me remind you of our 2023 workshop, link down below. Please check it out if you'd like to become a better photographer and a better storyteller. And if you found this video useful, entertaining or amusing, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below also for that. Thank you so much and I'll see you again in the next video.